lesser injury kit use. You're still alive. You have nothing on. Why do you have nothing on? I'm at your command. Seriously, why do you do this to me? Like, all the time. You have everything on. You don't. You died, so that's fair. There you go. Might as well use them. Okay. You take the greater health poultice, like a health poultice. It hurts a lot. You don't stand a chance. Then you can go over here, like quickly. Then I want you, how many do you have? You have four. Um, use that. Greater health poultice. Sick run. Summon your bear. Um, so firebomb on her. Yeah. What's this? Oh, I could have used that a bit ago. Oh well. It's only her left, so there's no point now. Come on. Come on. Bye, mother. Not the most stable of fights, but it was a fight. Oh! Oh no. What did you do, Alyssa? Grab your dagger. You should go grab your dagger. You're kind of a dual blade. I'll see your left dagger. Dude, grab, grab your attack. I got it. After the death of the mother, the remaining darkspawn forces scattered and fled back into the deep roads. The raids on Amaranthian came to an abrupt end. The architect apparently kept his word, gathering his remaining disciples to follow the rest of their kind back underground. Those Grey Wardens and other nations were able uh, were appalled to hear of the architect's continued existence, but were unable to track him down despite years of effort. But some within the Order have claimed that the Architect's survival guarantees another blight, and yet the deep roads have lately been quieter than any can recall. Most have resignedly decided that it is not; it is now in the Maker's hands. Words of the Grey Warren's heroic salvation of Amaranthian spread like wildfire. When the magnitude of the losses at the Vigil's Keep came to life, sympathy drove generous donations from all over Ferelden into the region's coffers. Amaranthian was restored to her former glory within a year, Vigil's Keep in five. Because of the Warden's support for law and order in Amaranthian, Constable Aiden and his men were able to dis distribute the smuggler's goods to the battered survivors in the grueling days that followed the Darkspawn defeat. The Darkspawn's messenger, set free after joining the Wardens in Battle Amaranthian, stuck out on his own. Struck out on his own, the city soon buzzed with stories of a cloaked but lisping figure who aided travelers in danger. At the same time, reports of isolated cases of the Darkspawn disease emerged. No one connected the two. Except for this story. <laughs> Just saying. The Arling's peasants suffered greatly during the war, and suffered yet worse in the years that followed. Success at the first riot at Vigil's Keep embodied them, and thus other uprisings followed, often put down with brutality. Although the war devastated many farms in the Arling, any all agreed the loss would have been greater without soldiers for protection. The farmholders developed a certain reverence for the warden commander, as well as the ongoing 
reliance on the Grey Warrens for order and protection. Dirk, one of the pranksters behind the Blight Orphan's scam, was fortunate enough to survive the Battle of Amaranthium. The unconditioning generosity of the Blight Orphan's mysterious benefactor inspired him to establish a legitimate charity dedicated to children orphaned in the attack. His sweetheart, Melise, eventually bore him two rascals. Vigil's keep stood alone against a horde of the darkspawn. The mother's forces outnumbered the vigil's defenders many times over. But the st sturdy dwarven walls provi bleh, proved impervious to any boulder any an orga could throw. See, okay, so it, it was fine. This is what I thought would happen. The vigil soldiers, clad in silverite, each felled a dozen darkspawn before they died. The vigil held one night, then two, then a week, and eventually the attacking horde broke up upon her walls. The keep developed an almost mythic reputation, the few survivors immortalized in song and legend. Peace allowed the wardens to replenish their numbers. Soon, Vigil's Keep bore a capable army with wardens at its core. From their ranks emerged new heroes to challenge threats to Amaranthian and all of Ferelden. Though taxes and levies, through taxes and levies, the Vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Valdric Calavank stood on the battlements and pronounced that the def defenses were acceptable. He would never speak more highly of any human engineering. <laughs> Dark whispers of conspiracy against Warrens fell silent after a rash of accidents and disappearances cul cul culminated in the apparent suicide of Ban Asmorella. The nobles of Amaranthian remained dutiful. Some even su suggest they were cowed into submission. Among the many legends that the Dark Vigil spawn was one of the great heroes of the next age a sheep herder turned soldier by the name of Sir Alec the Valiant, who eventually founded an order of knights that lasted a thousand years. Dwarkin Galvanuk, I don't remember who Alec was, clearly he was someone we saved, but I don't remember who, further refined his lyrium sand explosives, but left the warden's employ after Kunari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the dwarven bombardier took his secrets with him, the learned way, learned said he left the clues for others to follow in his footsteps. The vigil soldiers, wearing the distinctive silverite armor the Master Wade crafted, came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the Wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of the Ferelden's most rever revered military forces, a lasting memory of the vigil's famous commander. With Valana and the Architect gone from the region, the Pilgrim's Path began to see traffic again. The massacre of the the Taman and the merchants, however, led to hostilities between the neighboring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. One human village soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. The clans reacted by giving the wedding wood a wide berth, but both sides knew that at some point the elves would return for revenge. Why would you do that? Why would you kidnap your enemy's child, like a child from your enemy's group, and just kill them? Why? Why would you? That whatever. A few years after Cal Harol was emptied of Darkspawn, Osimar began sending expeditions to rediscover the knowledge of the smithing that had been lost within the, th the tag. Eventually, House Hellman decided that Cal Harol was too important to be abandoned. After, at a tremendous cost of dwarven lives, they cleared the tunnels leading to Cal Harol of all Darkspawn, making the road between Osimar and the fortress safe again. Cal Harol was reclaimed for Osimar once and for all. As promised, Valdric and Dwarkin presented Osmar's Chaparite with a stone marker that told of how Calharal's castles had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. The Commander of the Grey was invited to Osmar as the guest of honor at a feast comra comra commemorating the defenders of Calharal. The Shaper read the names of the castles off the marker, then presided over a ceremony to return them to the stone as befitted warriors of their statue. In times, so Arlen began to forget get the tales of the apparitions, apparitions in the Black Marsh, and ever so slowly settlers drifted into the region. The scholar said that the veil was still thin, and thus the area is still dangerous, but people only cared that there was no longer frightened whispers in the shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Twice the Baroness Mansion was rebuilt and occupied, once by a wealthy merchant and another time by an election mage. Both died mysteriously. Afterwards, the mansion was torn down completely and the site left untouched. Randers remained the, with the Grey Warrens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages. But when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a lecture on the nature of the architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Anders told the Commander of Grey that his time with the Warrens was over. And yet, not two months later, Anders returned to the Order. Ever after, the Warrens were his home and his lasting companions. Ha! Hmm. Dragon Age 2, we'll get there. <laughs> when the walls of the Vigil's Keep was breached, the surviving defenders watched in horror as a section of the stone collapsed upon Vilena. 
When the rubble was later cleared, however, there was no body. The lantern was just gone. Cause she has mystic weird powers and such. Over the next years, Nathaniel dedicated himself to the order and to clearing the blemishes on his family's home. After saving Tran Fergus Kalosland from a bandit attack, a portion of Amaranth Isn't that my brother from a bandit attack? A portion of Amaranthian was returned to the house. Ah, oh, thank you for saving my brother. <laughs> Nathaniel passed the holding to the Dalish son, no, to Delilah's son, when a new castle was eventually built there. A statue of Nathaniel was erected in its courtyard. Justice fought valiantly at the Battle of Virgil's Keep, but be before the victory horn sounded, our darkspawn sword removed Kristoff's head. It was, of course, unclear whether the spear of justice perished or simply departed. At the least, Kristoff's wife, Aurora, was finally able to claim her husband's ashes. This opens up way more questions than answers for, again, Dragon Age 2. <laughs> Spoiler alert. With the mother dead, Sergon seemed to lose her purpose. She withdrew from her friends in the Order and spoke to the le them less and less each day. One morning, Sergon was simply absent, her bed made and the trunk emptied. A young recruit who had been up in the night said she had left for, the call for her calling, gone to finish what she started in Calharal. At Vigil's keep, Orgrin rallied a last-minute defense on the gate, taking on two Orgrins simultaneously to allow others time to regain the courtyard. He eventually passed out from blood loss, and when he awoke weeks later, nobody was more surprised than he to discover he'd been credited as a hero. Orgrin continued to regale young Warren's recruits with tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. His, drifting, his drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather reattempt the joining than lift another muck. Falsi returned to Vigil's Keep several times to see Ogryn, usually bringing the toddler as well. Ogryn's inability to act seriously wore on her, however, and her visits dwindled, and then stopped altogether. If Ogryn missed her or his child, he never showed it. As for the savior of the Ferelden, she did not remain as a commander for the grave for long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern, and the blight well and truly over. It was time for her to move on. She claimed the commander reunited. Some claimed the commander reunited with a red-headed bard named, known as Liliana, and that they are adventured together still. The pair was spotted together in Denerim a year after the Blight's end. No matter the trove, the commander never did return to Vigil's Keep. Um... Hey! Sorry, let's... Now action in... I need to respond to them. Um, briefly. There's now action in the group chat, so the sound looks like I'm going to be called away. I don't know what's going to happen during, like, the credits. Um, but, hey, we are done with Awakening. That did not take that long. I think it would be about 30-something episodes? I think we're in the early 30s of, un of the edited and uploaded. So, yeah, I think this would be probably late 30s, maybe early 40s at the most. Um, uh, I like Awakening. It's a fun little game. Um, it would have been, yeah, I, mean, I guess when everyone was waiting for Dragon Age 2 to come out, it would have been a nice little distraction to, like, sedate, sedate um, satisfy your Dragon Age want. It's just a fun little game. It's simple. Well, it's not even simple. It's just it follows a path that makes sense. I guess is a good way to put it. I don't know. I like story. I'm curious to see how it will affect later games. Cause even I don't know. I am. I think almost done. Um. Uh, I think I'm almost done in Inquisition. I don't know how much I have left in my free time, but it's yeah. No, it's uh. I don't know what the hell. What would happen if I, maybe if I didn't ally with the architect? I don't know how that would make my game this different. Maybe I shouldn't have. Just so I could see, but uh, I just, I don't have a reason not to. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, even if it's a mistake, we'll fix the mistake. That's just how these things work. It was worth a shot in my eyes, because, hey, here's a chance to end the blight. Let's try and end the blight. Maybe we can help him and keep him from doing weird things again. Um... But, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say for this. I'm not clicking anything. I kind of need the credits to move faster, though. 
because I oh actually I don't we're not we're still waiting on someone so I think we're fi I'm fine I can fine I can wait for the credits to end <laughs> oh I knew it was gonna happen I knew they were gonna be like hey we're ready to do things during like the credits because that's just timing right timing plus I think if we, we were just too close to the end otherwise I would have ended sooner but we're done we're done with awakening um I'm not gonna do the DLC where it's like, do this from the Darkspawn point of view now. That, that doesn't interest me, I don't care. If I do ever care, I'll do that in my own time. So I'm gonna do Witch's Song, which I know nothing about, and Liliana, no. Witch, the Witch Hunt and Liliana's Song. Those two things. I know nothing about those. Um, I don't even know, like, how much gameplay there is. Like, I'm gonna like, for all I know, it could just be like a visual novel. Which I'm okay with. Unless I know I've seen um, let's place of one of them, but I don't think I've ever seen anything of the other ones. So maybe the other one's not okay on YouTube? I don't know. We'll see. I'll do some research later. Um, and even if it's like, no, you can't post this on YouTube, what are you doing? I'll just do a summary of what happened. I'll just record a video of a summary and going, hey, here's my opinions on this. Here's what happened, and here's my opinions. But I will try and play it and see what happens. Cause I, yeah, I'm curious. I know nothing about that. It, so, and then once we're done those, cause I don't think those are gonna be long. Cause this is like the long part of the DLC. So I'm assuming those are only gonna be a handful of episodes. And we're gonna be on two. We're gonna be doing Dragon Age two. This is uh taking over our year to get their origins, and we're finally almost done. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh Dragon Age, Dragon Age, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love the Dragon Age games. They're fun. I don't think I'm gonna be retouching Origins anytime soon, because I've essentially played it two and a half times uh in the last two years. <laughs> so um that's a lot. That is a lot of time in Origins. I don't think I'm gonna touch it anytime soon. Plus playing through Dragon Age two at least one like once and then playing through In inquisition like over a hundred episodes during or hours into inquisition i'm not done uh that's the only good thing about these not being blind is for the most part i can remember when to do things i don't have to do much backtracking as much i still do a lot of backtracking because it's me and i don't have that great of a memory but i can at least go yes i know i need to go this way and then i go this way and this way and that's a practical way to do it i'm not like running around going i don't know what i'm doing as much I know zero instead of like 50% of what knowing what I'm doing. Uh, oh boy. I'm hoping this tea didn't make, doesn't make me sick. I don't think it will, but I'm a little hesitant now. I only drank, I didn't even drink half of it. It's probably cold by now. I made it like two hours ago. I don't know. I didn't think I had peppermint tea. And then I found, I found like a open thing of loose tea. And then I found one that's still sealed off. So sealed off stuff should be fine. I don't know. Maybe I'll throw out this stuff and then try the sealed off one yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do like it smells fine and it tastes fine it just it's strangely th like thick isn't the right way to put it, but it's like it's putting a coating over my tongue almost it's more better way I don't know I think I'll just throw this out which is unfortunate I forgot I had so much loose tea oh my gosh I had like several packets of loose tea in my cupboard so I'm like okay I know I have this lemon tea that's like bagged and I have this like cinnamon apple tea which is also on the oldest side and I've been hesitant to try I'm like I have this lemon tea and I need to buy more lemon tea soon do I have any other like teas and it's like yes you have this it's like oh sweet I have peppermint tea and then I realized I had that which is my I like peppermint tea um I need to drink more tea that's enough oh sorry it's now fall so I guess I should be able to drink more tea come on credits come on <laughs> Oh boy. Oh. oh, I can't. Oh, we're in special thanks. That's a good sign. I. Oh wait, no cast. What? Oh, Anders, you get you get first on the list. Congrats. Edmonton and Montreal. Good boy. Good Canadians there. Austin's American. But yay, Canadians. Uh, I like how it's everyone's last name and then it's like Nathaniel Howe. He's the only one that deserves the last name. Ah, da, 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 da. 
I could just leave. Well, what's the point? Plus, when I leave, Dragster yells at me, so... Apparently, I have to talk through all the credits, no matter how long they are. Eh. It's hard to talk that long. <laughs> I get distracted, and then I start playing with my phone in the middle of it. Ah, uh, the additional voices. Plus, this doesn't have, like, randomly... No, I've asked. Stop doing your pop-ups. <laughs> Thank you for not doing that over top of the boss fight, though. That would have been terrible. Ugh. Boop. I want French toast. I think I'm gonna make French toast for dinner tonight. Yeah. Like, literally, this is where I'm coming. So I'm just like, ah, let's just, ran let's just say random stuff. Because I don't know what to say. It's just awakening. Or it's not just awakening. It's fun. It's worth the money. Af even if it's uh, so soon after uh, Origins. It's still worth it. It's a fun time. Uh, I'm thinking about making book videos again, but I don't know. It's been two years since I've made any booktube videos. It's also been two years since I've watched a significant amount of booktube videos. So I don't know. Maybe I'll start getting into that. Cause I just, I just, I don't even really. I just kind of want to do first. I used to do videos called first impressions, where I read like the first chapter or two of a book, and then like here's my first opinions on this book, and whether it's like it's enough to catch on. I kind of want to do more of those. Maybe. I don't know. It also means going on camera, so... I don't know if I'll do this again. I just, every once in a while, I'm like, I kind of want to talk about books. Kind of want to... I'm, I'm going to want to talk about Swamp Rider once I finish it. You want, if, you, if, you, if you want a good book, read Scorpion Rules by Aaron uh, Bo. Read Swamp Rider, which is the sequel, and it's so good. I love it. There's so many little Canadian references, and it's great, despite it being a dystopian world. Oh, that makes me happy. It makes me so happy to find a dystopian world where Canada still exists and de manifest destiny didn't happen. And it's just phenomenal. And it's placed in Saskatchewan and it's just... It's great. It's a great little thing. But then, yeah, it's like, yep, this is this is Canadian when... <laughs> you know this is Canadian when one of the horses is named Gordon Lightfoot. Is that what his name? I think that's what his name is. I'm just like, oh gosh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> We're doing this right now? Alright. Um, I didn't put my case back in my phone. That's not good. Where's my phone? No nope, Siri. I don't need you, Siri. Sorry. Yes, I'm playing with my phone. I'm just kind of turning it on and off as a fidgety. Something to fidget with. Oh boy, the credits are locked. <laughs> ah. Translations. That's a good sign, right? External partners, that's gonna be a good sign. There can't be that many, right? Germany, Italy, Spain, Czech Republic, Russia, Hungary, France, Poland. EA Canada! Yay, Canada! <laughs> uh. Do, 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 I don't know. It's a fun game. I'm excited. I'm excited to get to 2, surprisingly. Because, yeah, I know there's a lot of hatred for 2. I still... Well, it makes me passionately angry about certain parts of the story. And a certain other thing that I will rant about. <laughs> once we get to it. Um, the, for the most part... It's just a fun time. That's the thing about Dragon Age games, like, no matter, even no matter how annoying they get for, like, a little bit, they're still just fun times overall. Like, they're, they take forever, but it's not, it doesn't feel like a waste of time for a majority of it. Every once in a while it's like, why am I doing this? But then there's other times where it's like, I like this. I like this a lot. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things in Dragon Age games. We're almost done. We're almost done. Watch it slowly rise up. Oh, I'm gonna need to remember to edit out my email <laughs> after this. Ah, editing, blah. Who likes editing? Are we done? Are we done? Bye, Angel Sepolia. Yeah, we're done. Want to thank you for watching. 
Hope to see you in the next DLC. I don't know if I'm going to do Witch's Hunt or Liliana's Song first. We'll see. We'll see. It's probably whichever one's first to the list. But, um, yeah. Well, actually, other campaigns. Um, uh, yeah. Witch's Hunt's first. So let's do Witch's Hunt next. Okay. Well, want to thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.